about 800 million people in the world suffer from chronic hunger and undernutrition. In low- and middle-income countries in particular, malnutrition in children under 5 often results in stunting, which is a low height for age, and wasting, a low weight for height. Such consequences leads to high mortality rates and an increase in the likelihood for disability, disease, and decreased economic productivity in adulthood. As our global population continues to grow and natural resources continue to be expended, more needs to be done to address world hunger and the inequities present between high and low income countries. One way we can individually act is by eating more vegetarian meals. Did you know that if everyone in the US stopped eating beef, pork, and poultry, 1.4 billion additional people could be fed? This is because growing animal products takes up valuable land resources, both for raising the animals and growing food for them to eat. Instead of using land to feed animals, it could be used to grow plant-based foods to feed the hungry. Eating vegetarian also fights against climate change. Animal production accounts for 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions, which leads to increased global warming. As temperature, rain, and extreme weather events like drought increase, crop production and accessibility to food will be negatively impacted and most severely felt by those already suffering from chronic hunger. So you might be wondering, can we really as individuals make a difference by just making small dietary changes? And the answer is yes. If we all together start eating more vegetarian meals or just choose more vegetarian meals more often, we can start a shift away from a meat-dominated culture and also at the same time fight against climate change. In this video, I'll be eating vegetarian for one week and show you some places you can eat on the UBC Point Grey campus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good morning. Uh, today is day one of eating vegetarian. So it's Monday, March 7. And today I'm running a little bit late for class. So I'm just going to eat an egg for breakfast. Skeletal muscle tissue and adipose tissue to fat tissue. So kind of like runs or carrots. The first stop for lunch is at Blue Chip. They have a variety of vegan options including a vegan cookie and this vegan falafel wrap. I would give this one an 8.5 out of 10. I'm back for dinner. I live in Totem Park, so let's go check out the vegetarian options at the Totem Park dining hall called Feast. Feast is great because they have the menus posted in the front so you can quickly check some of the options available. They also have their own salad bar and roasted vegetable section and also fresh fruits and vegetables are available. Some vegetarian options include this spinach and chickpea wrap and this egg salad sandwich. They also have both vegetarian and non-vegetarian salad options and as well vegan desserts. For dinner, I got this white bean burrito bowl. I would give it a 9 out of 10. It was pretty solid. After my usual breakfast of a granola bar, I went to Porch for lunch. It's completely vegan and vegetarian and located in the nest. One of the options is to build your own bowl or wrap, and some of the toppings you can choose include falafel, tofu, almonds, and your choice of vegetables. So this is the porch and make your own bowl. You got tofu, edamame, carrots, tortilla chips, um, organic greens, cucumbers, almonds, carrots, and some brown rice underneath. For dinner, I went to Mercante at Feast. I was really lucky they were open. This pizza was great as usual. After class, I went to the deli for lunch, and what I really loved about the deli was that they have such a great variety of options, including vegetarian and vegan, and they also have a build-your-own sandwich bar, which I thought was really cool. This sandwich was really great for the quality and money. For dinner, I went to The Point, and I got the vegetarian tomorrow plant-based burger, and can I just give a shout out to Maggie's room? It's so aesthetic and beautiful. The burger itself was actually quite good, I couldn't really tell that it was vegetarian, and a great thing about the point is that it takes meal plan. Morning 
everyone. So this is my fourth day of eating vegetarian and I'm just on my way to research. I actually woke up really late, so I'm going to skip breakfast. Um, but yeah, let's go find some vegetarian eats for today. I would give this veggie bowl an 8 out of 10, but a great thing about Pacific Poke is that it also accepts meal plan. Orchard Commons is very similar to Totem, but definitely one of my favorite vegetarian things to get here is the spinach mushroom avocado quesadilla. Definitely 9 out of 10. Bombay Masala is a restaurant located off campus, but it's quite close on the 99, about 2-3 stops away. I would really recommend trying the naan bread. So I have officially slept in past breakfast again, so we're just gonna go check out what feast I have again from lunch. To start off my last day of being vegetarian, I got these spinach and feta egg bennies from the dining hall and absolutely they were really really good. I would give 9.5 out of 10. I would say the signature vegan burger from Feast is still good but I would definitely still prefer the one from The Point, although I would say this is still a good option if you're living in residence. Thank you so much for reaching the end of this video. For me, eating vegetarian for one week really opened my eyes to see how eating vegetarian really isn't that big of a deal because at the end of the day, I'm still eating good food, I'm still getting full, and meeting all my nutritional requirements. I hope from this video you might consider going to some of the places that I featured and also eating more plant-based foods more often. This is because eating more vegetarian meals can help end world hunger. This can be done by increasing the resources available to grow food for those who are chronically hungry, and also fight climate change and reduce your carbon footprint, which reduces the impacts that it can have on crop production and food accessibility. If you have any remaining questions, feel free to reach out to my email, but also refer to some of the sources that I'll put in the description box below. I'll also put a list of all the places that I've been uh, at UBC for my vegetarian meals and further additional locations that I didn't have the opportunity to go to this week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.